Hello UCL managers and welcome back for another video. Today we go over our team selection for match day 4. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel and also click the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. Also look out for FPL Social which is a live in-person FPL event coming up in Melbourne in February of next year. We're going to be there so if you guys want to meet and greet, click the link in the description to learn more and also get tickets. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. So first of all, having a look at how the team got on in match day 3, it was a pretty decent game for us and it was one in which we used our wildcard token, so the team is looking pretty similar from last week to this week, as of course the fixtures do remain the same. First of all, having a look at the goalkeepers, Perry got the 0 points, we were hoping he was going to get a start for Juventus, but Chesney did get back to play for the, in the Champions League for them. The other goalkeeper in Gerbic as well also got 0 points as he went for the minimum priced goalkeepers which was a bit of a risk as we did prioritise a lot of other higher priced players in the outfield especially in midfield and attack but I still would say this move worked out as the money that we did spend on these players did prove fruitful. Moving on to the defenders now Akanji got 0 points. This was quite a disappointing one I was hoping he was going to start for Manchester City. But it was the case that Laporte did come back into that Manchester City side from his injury to play in the Champions League. Hopefully he can get a start in match day 4, but I would expect Laporte to play once again in the Champions League. Moving on, Kostic did get himself 6 points as Juventus recorded the clean sheet, which was good to see for Kostic. He couldn't provide any attacking returns, but I am hopeful that he can do so in the second match between uh, Juventus and Maccabi Haifa, as he of course does get a uh, fair way up the pitch in open play. Then Jacques Ancelo, despite getting subbed off in the 57th minute, still was able to get himself 5 points as he did record an assist. Definitely quite a frustrating one as if he did play 3 more minutes, he would have picked up those 4 extra clean, uh, extra clean sheet points and could have potentially jumped on bonus points as well. Into the midfield is now Onyo Dika got himself 4 points as despite him not getting a goal or assist, he did get a few interceptions as well which is good to see from him as that is his main point source. Federico Valverde couldn't provide anything for Real Madrid in a fairly lackluster game for them. He just got himself 3 points, he did actually have a very good chance to provide an assist for his teammate in Karim Benzema late in the game but he couldn't convert the chance. Then the heart of the team had to be Leroy Sane as he was our captain on the first match day of or the first day of the midweek games in the Champions League. He was able to record two goals which was good to see for Bayern Munich. Surprisingly he didn't get a man of the match award for his two goals. He also got subbed off in the 57th minute as well, so missed out on that extra playing point there. Even, uh, despite this though, he still was the highest scoring player in our side with 12 points, though it up to 24. So definitely very happy we stuck with Leroy Sane on the wild card. And then the pick to go with Mo Salah, another player that was quite expensive. He definitely was a bit of a risk considering his poor recent goal scoring form, but it was good to see him get yet another goal in the Champions League, picking up 11 points as well as he did receive the Man of the Match award. So definitely very happy with Mo Salah's performance. Looking to the lads up top, it was pretty decent with returns all round up top. Erling Haaland got himself 9 points as he got himself 2 goals in the first half as he got subbed off after 45 minutes against Copenhagen. Neymar provided an assist for 4 points for PSG. He did pick up a yellow card taking him down an extra minus point there, but still a decent performance from him. And then the new signing on the wild card, Vlahovic, was able to get himself his first goal of the Champions League, picking up some decent def uh, domestic form in the Serie A, recording 7 points there. So that meant in total we scored 73 points for the match day, which was a fairly decent output. I uh, has seen our overall rank drop from 29k to 40k, but still I have to say overall a fairly competitive rank, and one that I'm pretty happy with coming into match day 4. So with match day 3 being covered, let's have a look at how the team lines up for match day 4. We have made two transfers to the squad as there were a couple of injury concerns as well as rotation risks in the team as well. So let's have a look at how the squad lines up. First of all, taking a look at the bench, Gerbic still sits there at £3.9 million as one of the lowest priced players in UCL Fantasy right now. He's got Club Rouge at home, but he does remain uh, as the second bench keeper as we have actually signed the new keeper into the squad as Perrin looks to be a rotation risk for Juventus. Onya Dika uh, goes starts on the bench this week. He's got Atletico Madrid away. He could potentially come on if there's a player in the starting squad that doesn't score too well or doesn't start as he always is reliable for those interception points 
as he's actually been a pretty good value player for his price so far this season. Then Upamancano is uh, the first change that we've made to the squad. Alfonso Davies did have that injury concern for Bayern Munich, so Upamancano comes in at around half a million pounds cheaper. He's been getting consistent starting minutes in the Champions League, and Bayern Munich did get themselves a clean sheet in their first game to Victoria Plisson. So with another very good fixture against them, I'm hoping that they can do that once more, which would of course see Upamancano get those clean sheet points. He does play on the second day of the midweek games though and that is why he sits on the bench so we can always come on for a player once again if they don't score well or don't play and then Nuno Tavares another player that plays on the second day of the midweek games and that's why he currently goes on the bench. Looking to the starting players now, Cohn is the starting goalkeeper. He's come in at £4.5 million and was able to get himself a clean sheet in his first fixture against Dinamo Zagreb. So hopefully versing them away this week, uh, RB Salzburg can uh, repeat the trick. Looking to the defenders now, we've gone with a double up on Manchester City defence. Akanji still does remain in the side. Not a massive fan of taking a minus four hit to get him out of the team, just on the off chance that he does play. And even if he doesn't play, we do have the flexibility in the squad to bring in one of those bench players. So for me, probably not worth the minus four there. Then Kostic, one of my favourite picks for this week. Maccabi Hay for away. Very promising fixture from a defensive standpoint. And of course, he can get forward and provide those goals and assists. Then Jao Cancelo, Copenhagen away. One of my favourite defenders in the UCL fantasy right now, Jao Cancelo. He's a good, consistent starter for Manchester City, and they've got great clean sheet potential in this game. Plus, Cancelo does get forward, and has provided quite a lot of attacking returns for his owners so far this UCL season. On to the midfielders now. Florentino is currently listed as a starting midfielder. He's a player that's probably going to get subbed out depending on how many points he scores. But right now, Paris Saint-Germain away, not the easiest fixture. Just another one that can get those interception points. Then Federico Valverde gets another start. Shaq Donatesque away. Definitely a great fixture from an attacking standpoint. So I'm hoping he can return to his brilliant best. Obviously, after coming off the back of winning the Player of the Month in La Liga, as he has scored quite a few goals to start his UCL and La Liga campaign. Most faces Rangers away, another very good fixture. He was able to get himself a goal in the reverse fixture last week. So considering that Rangers have conceded one of the most amount of goals out of any team so far this group stage, I'm hopeful for that Liverpool attacking return there. Uh, then Leroy Sane has got Victoria Pleasant away. He's been in superb Champions League form recently. Obviously two goals in his last match against them. I'm hoping that he can build on that. Then looking to the lads up top, Erling Haaland takes the captain's armband against Copenhagen away. He does play on the first day. We can always swap this captain's armband to another player if he does get subbed off early once more or doesn't get his customary goal it seems at the moment. Then Vlahovic, another good fixture. Maccabi Haye for away, obviously scored against them in the reverse fixture. He's been in good domestic form. He's got himself his first Champions League goal now, so I'm hoping he can repeat the trick. And then Neymar, superb fixture against Benfica at home. Another very solid pick at around £10 million right now, so happy to have him in the side. With that all being said, we do have £0.0 .0 million pounds in the bank because we have made our two free transfers and haven't taken any hits in the squad. Thanks for watching today's UCL team selection for match day 4. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel. And also click the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. Once again, look out for FPL Social, which is a live in-person FPL event coming up in Melbourne of February of next year. We're going to be there, so for more information, click the link in the description. And also get tickets via this link as well. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.